What's up everyone? Today I want to talk to you about programs and give you a quick review of each of the programs that I've done. I often get asked, hey Alan, what do you think of this program? What do you think of that program? Does this program work? Does that program work? And honestly, before I even start this video, every, well, almost every program works as long as you make it work. If the program centers around the squat, the deadlift, the overhead press, and the bench press, and there's some sort of realistic progression, the program works, it's going to get you stronger. There really aren't any secrets to programming, it's, except for those two. They should center around the barbell movements, and there should be some sort of realistic progression. Uh, I've done many programs in my day, and someone might ask, well, if every program works, why have you done so many? Why change programs if every one of them work? And that's a great question. The reason is, sometimes my goals change, sometimes your goals change. Uh, you might want to work with a little bit lighter weight, uh, higher reps, heavier weight, lower reps. You might be training for a powerlifting meet, a strongman competition, an Olympic weightlifting meet. You might just be training to get stronger. Uh, and on top of all that, I'm a firm believer that you really have to enjoy what you're doing in the gym. And if you're doing a program that you absolutely hate and you dread it, switch programs. Do something that is going to get you in the gym and going to keep you motivated. So there are a few reasons why you might switch programs. But with that said, always give your best effort put your best foot forward when you're doing a program don't do it for a couple of weeks and say eh, it's not working i'm going to switch all of these programs that i've done i tried to milk it for everything i could i did it for a very long time uh, some for many months some for over a year so let's get to it so the first program that i'll talk about is starting strength or strong lifts five by five which is just a rip off of starting strength so this is a great beginner program because uh, first off, it teaches the lifter how to make progress. I used to go in the gym and just do a whole bunch of stuff and never really focus on what I did last time, what I'm gonna do today, what I'm gonna do tomorrow. And progress is often overlooked in a lot of beginners. Stress, recover, adapt, or something like that. Another reason starting strength is a great program is because it rapidly increases your strength or your ability to lift weights. If you're training three times a week, five pounds each training session, that's 15 pounds a week, that's 60 pounds in a month on your lifts, that's a lot of weight. Another reason starting strength is an awesome program for beginners is because it's extremely productive. You're gonna do everything you need and nothing you don't. It's easy to follow, bench, squat, deadlift, overhead press, uh, power clean, maybe barbell row, any lifter can do this. Your 80 year old grandmother can start starting strength today. There is no start point. You don't need a uh, predetermined one rep max and use calculations and all this. Just do something for three sets of five, whether it's the barbell or whether it's 225. Do three sets of five, add five pounds each session. There's no starting point and there's no experience needed. Now, some of the cons with starting strength or strong lifts five by five, uh, most people stall out sooner than they'd like. And whether that's the program's fault or the lifter's fault, who knows? Uh, usually, you're not doing the program like it's intended. If you read the book, hey, you're in the shot. You're embarrassing me. So anyways, most people stall out sooner than they like. And that might be because you're not doing everything that you need to be doing outside of the gym in order for the stuff that you're doing inside the gym to actually work. You've got to eat a lot of food. If you're a beginner and you're a skinny teenager, you need to eat a lot of food, you need to get a lot of sleep, you need to take your training sessions seriously, you need to remain consistent for all of this to add up. Another con of starting strength is that it can be boring as f. Like I said earlier, I'm a firm believer that you have to enjoy what you're doing, and over time, people get really, really burnt out of, burnt out on three sets of five. So sometimes you might wanna switch things up. And the last negative for starting strength is that it might lack volume for some. Now, this is kind of a controversial topic. A lot of people think that beginners need a lot of volume. Some think three sets of five, five sets of five is all you need. Uh, I'm not gonna argue that. I've seen people get strong with 20 rep squats or five sets of 10, and I've seen plenty of guys get extremely strong doing starting strength. So, for some, it might lack volume. The next program is an extension of starting strength and it is the more intermediate program of starting strength, uh, also created by Mark Ripito. It's the Texas Method. I absolutely love the Texas Method. I think it's awesome. Uh, I remember when I started this program, I don't remember my exact numbers, 
but my squat was just a little bit over 315 for five. And I did this program. It took me to 405 for five on the squat. And a fun fact about that particular set, 405 for five, that was the first time that I'd ever put 405 on my back. So until then, I'd never squatted 405. The first time it was on my back, I did it for five reps following this program. It works. Again, you have to make it work. You gotta eat a whole lot, which is what I was doing. You gotta sleep a whole lot, and you gotta be consistent. Now the pros to Texas method are very similar to what I just listed for starting strength or strongest five by five. But the Texas method extends your progress from every day and starting strength, five pounds of training session, to every week. So you're progressing weekly rather than uh, per training session. It does this by incorporating a heavy day, starting your week with a, a volume day, excuse me, and then a light day, and then a heavy day. Increasing each of those days five pounds each week. So you're really working for that one set of five every Friday. So again, increasing weight weekly, not daily. A con or a negative about the Texas method is that they can be very long training sessions. On your volume day or your first day of the week, your Monday, if you're doing let's say you're squatting uh, 360, 350 for five by five, you're benching 250, 275 for five by five, and you're deadlifting uh, 405 for five. So you're a pretty intermediate lifter. That, that makes for a very long training session, warming up and doing all five sets of squat, all five sets of bench, warming up and doing your set of five for deadlifts. The sessions can last a long time depending on how much rest you're taking, and it usually ends up being almost five minutes between each set, uh, three to five minutes. So if you don't have two, two and a half hours to devote to training, those Mondays can be really, really tough. Another negative for some is that operating at maximum every week is difficult. If you're a beginner or if you're truly intermediate, it can be done, but every week, uh, every Friday, you're setting a new five rep max. And eventually that's gonna catch up with you and it's gonna be hard to maintain. The last negative of the Texas method is just like I mentioned with the starting strength program is that some people think that it lacks volume. Um, I've noticed that the upper body, upper body training does not always respond to the same volume as squats and deadlifts. And I've seen people continue to make progress on their deadlift, but their squat starts to slow down and their bench completely stops, overhead press stops. So it's hard to maintain all four of those lifts evenly throughout the whole uh, cycle of the Texas method. So again, volume might be a factor in why this program is not working for you. Next program is Jim Wendler's 531. This was the very first program that I ever did uh, that involved or incorporated percentage-based work, which I had never done before this. This program had the longest duration of time that I've been on a program. I did it for probably over a year, continuing, continuing to make progress. Uh, and the reason you can continue making progress for a very long time, this is the first pro of 531, uh, is that you're operating at 90% uh, of what's called a training max. You're operating at 90% of a true max. So if you can squat 315, uh, you're not operating off of that true max, you're operating on 90%. Uh, so when you're doing 80% for a set, you're actually doing 80% of 90% of your main your actual max so operating uh, this low will allow you to make progress for a very very long time shooting for rep prs can keep the lifter motivated instead of doing 200 having the same exact uh rep scheme 200 for five now 205 for five now 210 for five now 215 for five you actually the variable can change with your reps so the weight is always changing but your reps are determined by you there's always a minimum but you can take advantage of a good day and really drive those reps up, or you can uh, call it somewhat short on a bad day and really have no effect on the program. With a program where you're held accountable to a, a certain number of reps, you have to get five and you only get four, that's it, you failed, you have to do it again. With this program, shooting for rep PRs, you never really fail, you just might do better on some days than others. Another pro for five through one is that it's simple uh, and it manages fatigue for someone coming from a bodybuilding routine background. When I used to go into the gym before I did 5 through one I would always just do a whole bunch of sets, a whole bunch of reps, 
uh, and go for that pump, just like a, a bodybuilder might. Uh, and I remember the first thing I thought of when I saw 531, when I read it, uh, a friend of mine who was a lot stronger than me said, hey dude, do this. I looked at it and I said, that's it. One set of five, second set of five, and then a set of five plus. So it's really only one real productive set. Um, but sometimes leaving a little bit in the tank, doing a little bit less will allow you to make progress. Now, one downside of five through one is that you have to know your one rep max, or you have to be no close to it. Three rep max, two rep max, uh, because you can use a calculator to figure out what you should be lifting for one rep. Uh, the reason this is not a good, not good for beginners is because beginners don't always know their max. I'm not gonna have someone walk into the gym for the first time and say, all right, let's see how much weight you can do, and then we'll calculate percentages off that. Uh, starting strength, or the Texas method, you can start with this weight, maybe not the Texas method, but starting strength and strong lifts five by five. Start with this weight, add five pounds, and just continue doing that. You can start with the barbell if you need to. Uh, but with five through one, you have to have a predetermined one rep max. The next downside to five through one is that lazy people could get away with minimum effort because you're not ac held accountable to a certain number. I actually said that was a pro, and it could be, but it can also be a con. What I mean is, when you're doing the Texas method or any program that says, you have to get this weight for five reps. Next week, you have to get five pounds more for five reps. It keeps you accountable. There is no gray area. You know you have to do five reps. But with uh, five through one, there's a minimum that you have to get, and a lazy person might just get minimum every time or just past that. But I guess lazy people aren't gonna get very strong anyway, so that doesn't really matter. Lastly, with five through one, there is no end in sight. This is not a 12 week program or a six month program, one month program. You do it for as long as you want. When Jim Wendler created it, he said, I don't wanna know where I'm gonna be in six weeks. I wanna look at where I'm gonna be in five years. So because there is no end in sight, it might be difficult for someone to stick with because they don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, it's when you're on a 12 week program, you know, all right, I'm on week eight, uh, four more weeks to go. Let's do this, let's keep pushing. But with five through one, I've noticed that some people have a tough time just continuing to do the same thing month after month. 